Good morning, pilgrims. I'm back on the Camino Frances. It is day one, if you're starting to follow me from here, but I've actually been walking since Le Pio in Valais about a month ago on the Via Podiensis, which is just an amazing trip that I highly recommend you do. But the trip actually started four years ago when I did my first Camino Frances in 2017, a trip that changed my life. So many kilometers under my belt, so many beautiful landscapes, amazing food, and best of all, all the friendships that I've created over the years. So today we have an amazing day ahead, full of wonders. <laughs> it is cloudy, it is cold, and it's gonna remain like that for the remaining of the day. About seven or eight hours to Roncesvalles, but first I have to go to the bakery. Yesterday I went to uh, the supermarket over here and I got some supplies for today, but I need what? I need a little bit of bread. I guess I'll see you all after the intro, of course. And we are leaving the beautiful town of uh, St. John Pied de Port. It feels so much like in Treasure Island, the seaport, where you got all the people getting ready to set off on an adventure of a lifetime. Some are also getting there from different routes in uh, France, as I did. I follow the GR65, which I will be following still all the way to Roncesvalles, because in some guidebooks, the actual Via Podiensis ends in Roncesvalles and not here in St. John Pied de Port. And if you remember that my last videos, I thought this was just like the Spanish flag, but this is the GR65. We have a 24 kilometer day today ahead. It's gonna be beautiful, it's gonna be hard. We're climbing about 1,400 meters of elevation, so everything is to the max. At least it looks like we're gonna have some decent weather, which is always great. By the way, guys, my name is Efren Gonzalez. I'm a travel adventure vlogger. As you guys know, I've done many Caminos here in Spain. I did the Frances in 2017, the Via Francigena in 2018. In 2019, I did the Portuguese, the Norte, Inglés. I've also walked to Fisterra. And then this year, in July, I did Ponferrada to Santiago. Then I did the San Salvador and then the Primitivo. So yeah, and I just completed the Via Podiensis. So, huh. The list is growing by the year. Let's add another one right now. I don't know if you can tell, but we started climbing and today we have a massive climb, especially if it's your first day here on the Camino. The toughest section is the first 25% of the way to the Orizona Berge, a place where a lot of pilgrims pre-book in advance just to stay there, but it is the 25% of the way to Roncesvalles. I'm gonna go all the way following the Napoleon route, which is uh, the most beautiful one. It is closed from uh, November 1st to uh, March 31st in the winter. In the winter, or when you have bad weather, you're supposed to follow the winter route, which is uh, on my right-hand side. It kind of follows the road. It's easier until the end when you have to do the climb. You can't get away from it, <laughs> especially if it's day one for you. I remember when I did it in 2017, so I know what's in store for me. In my case, I've been walking for a month already, so I have my trail legs and, you know, I also have a few kilometers under my belt. Do you guys see that little peak up there all the way at the top? Let's zoom in a little bit, maybe a little bit more. Yes, right next to the house, there's a viewpoint and that is the toughest section of the day. The 25% of the way awaits us up there and also up there is the first alberga where we're going to be stopping for a snack and also to get some water.
So exciting to see my first yellow arrow. I've been following the red and white stripes of the GR65 for the last month. When it comes to all the pilgrims, there are just a few far in between. I took a rest day yesterday in St. John Piedipore and it was a ghost town. I mean, compared to how it was in April 2017, yeah, there was just nobody. It's just a signs of our times, you know? I'm not going to Santiago de Compostela. I wish it would have been a 1,500 kilometer, two month uh, pilgrimage from uh, Le Pew in Valais. But, you know, I can only be here in Europe for three months at a time in a six month period. And I already took about a month and a half in July when I was doing all those short caminos in Spain. So I'm going as far as Logroño and then head back home. Now, of course, I already walked the Camino Frances, so if you want to watch that vlog series, my first one, you can go ahead and uh, find the link in the description down below with a ton of other information like uh, daily cost breakdowns, you know. You can also become a channel member or a troll angel. Everything is just organized down there. You can also find the map video breakdowns of all the stages, which will help you plan your Camino. And just like that, after walking for uh, two hours, I already made it to the 25% of the way. After that massive climb that you gotta take it one step at a time, you can zigzag, take your time, take little breaks. Whatever you do, just keep going. You can also follow the road, which the cyclists also follow. I don't know if that one is easier, but it looked kind of steep from my viewpoint. Up here, you're rewarded with an amazing view all around. Here we got kind of like a partial view, but you can still see St. John Pied de Port all the way down there. I was having breakfast this morning at 7 a.m. at this uh, coffee place right next to the river where I had a uh, chocolatine as they're known here in France. So many names there, uh, chocolate croissant, Northern uh, France, they call them pan au chocolat, chocolatine in the South, and in Spain, of course, they're the famous Napolitano. I also had orange juice, not freshly squeezed, but that's about to change uh, probably tomorrow morning. You're also rewarded up here with your first uh, water source of the day, so make sure that you drink plenty of water and then uh, fill up your, uh, your water bottle. I have a water filtration system that relies on a ultraviolet light just to kill anything that's left inside that bottle. The water here in France and Spain is drinkable. You don't have to do it. But for me, it's just an extra step of precaution. So 25% of the way, I'm about to have a little snack. And up ahead is Horizon.
quick stop here behind me is Refugio or Albergue Horizon, a famous uh, popular stop for the people that just don't want to walk all the way to Roncesvalles. I've been seeing uh, new signs for an albergue that's a kilometer down the line, so that could be an extra option if you don't want to stop this early in the morning. I had a cafe con leche, of course, and I also got a stamp in my pilgrim passport. I also saw a sign for a five euro freshly squeezed orange juice, a little bit too much. I think I may have my first one in Spain, uh, but did I mention that I do have a, a lunchbox? So from my lunchbox, I had an egg and I also had some uh, fruits, grapes, and I also have a little bit of bread. I don't want to be walking with a full stomach. So, you know, just a little snack just to keep the energy levels up. Second water source of the day is here. There's also a pilgrim uh, bathroom behind me. And uh, yeah, let's continue. I can see that the sun is already coming out, which is great news because up until this point, it's just been very gloomy. It's getting cold up here. I think uh, according to my little thermometer here, it's like 55 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, about 12 degrees Celsius. And I just had a quick stop by the Virgin back there. Last time around, I did not see it. There was so much fog that I just missed it completely. But this time I got to stay there for a little bit, enjoy the rest of my grapes, and also a couple of slices of cheese. You know, I learned a thing or two in France. Well, by the way, I'm still in France. <laughs> the border is up ahead. Just got my last stamp in France at the food truck where I got one last time around, same one. But I didn't get any snacks because of course I have a lunch box full of goodies. And I just made it to the cross and the monument that commemorates the battle of Roncesvalles up here with the poem in French, the whole nine yards. Very close to the border where I will be having 
lunch and also opening up that bottle of red wine. Entering Spain in style. That's the way I like to do it this time around. After 30 days of walking across southern uh, France along the GR65, the Via Podiensis, uh, Chaman, Le Pew and Valet made it to the border where I made myself some lunch. I had a sandwich, man, and it was a fully loaded sandwich, and I also opened up a small bottle of red wine. Of course, it is time to celebrate because we just crossed the border between France and Spain, and just like that, we went from uh, Bon Chaman to Buen Camino. Hola, España. I'll drink to that. I am literally walking inside a cloud and it cannot be more of a visual representation of how I'm feeling inside. And no, it is not the wine, although it kind of did the trick. But yes, finally made it to Spain. This was the forest that in 2017 I was walking through. The ground was covered with leaves, but that was in April. Now we're at the end of uh, September. And by the way, don't tell anybody, but I did it again. It is September 29, not 28. But that's one of the best things about being out here in the Camino. Who cares what day of the week it is? I don't know, should I? I'm completely disconnected from the rest of the world. Now I've been seeing more uh, pilgrims that speak Spanish, and from now on, I won't be lost in translation anymore. And that just feels amazing. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. Can't wait to get to Ronces Valles and settle in and relive everything once again. Everything feels like deja vu and it is just great. So there's an emergency shelter in case you're caught up here in a storm. And I wanted to check out the inside and there was quite a surprise because there was a pilgrim inside. It's a guy that just went to a Fisterra and he's on his way back. So I guess tomorrow is his last day. I wanted to offer him the leftover wine, but the guy already has a bottle of wine. So I guess we're both on the same uh, wavelength here or I don't know. Maybe I should start cutting down on wine. All right, let's continue on. No views up here. Last time I ran, I could see the mountains in the distance, but I saw them this morning. So it was kind of like the opposite of 2017. I know that I'm not far away from Roncesvalles already, but there, here's a surprise. Instead of going down to Roncesvalles the same way that I went last time around, I want to make a right turn and go to this little chapel. But I'll talk about that 
once I get to the split, of course. Should I finish this? I mean, after all, I don't want to carry the weight, right? 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 I think I may have spoken too soon about going to on that detour to the chapel. I'm inside a complete whiteout, just a mist, not really rain, but I can't see anything in any direction. I mean, look behind me just a little bit and in front, look at that. So I don't know. If it doesn't clear out, then I'll just go straight to Ronces Valles. By the way, I'm using a luggage transfer service. Did I mention that already? Well, I am. Why? Because I was doing the Via Podiensis and there I don't speak French. I couldn't book ahead. So I booked everything from home. And then once I have everything, everything booked, I decided, you know what? Let's just try out this uh, luggage transfer service so I don't have to wash my clothes every day. So I can have a few luxury items, like a full, you know, deodorant, or even uh, perfume, or shampoo, you know, the good things in life. So here in Spain, I decided to go with Jaco Trans. Why? Because you guys recommended it. And also, <laughs> because it is a company that actually go to uh, St. John Pied de Port. I wanted to use the Correos, but they only start in Ronces Valles. The only downside is that in Ronces Valles, you're gonna have to pick up the luggage at the hotel or something like that. I mean, it's the only place. And also Ronces Valles is the only kind of like public or municipal albergue that I'm using. Everything else is just private accommodations. Yes, yes, I know. I'm turning it to a Turigrino. But when you get to walk, over 2,000 kilometers in one year, you better start taking care of your body. So here's the split that I was just talking about. If you remember the windmill, I think that's the way through the forest. And then there's the alternative, probably this way behind me. I'm just gonna go straight to Rosen's Valles because even if I get to the chapel, I won't be able to fly. Okay, little fun fact here. The first stone marker is pink. Let's continue. If I remember correctly, the downhill through this forest is quite a good one. We got to climb 1400 meters of elevation, 1400. I don't remember how much we're going down. Woo, look at that forest. Very spooky. I like it. So here we are, finally made it to uh, Ronces Valles, and I'm at the bridge where last time around in 2017, I stopped the clock and it was, what was it? Seven hours and 50 minutes. So what is it now? But five hours and 57. So I did it in two hours less. Wow. So yes, let's fall back into the all too familiar routine at the albergue. I also had to find my luggage and I'm so glad <laughs> that I don't have to do laundry today because you know it's not gonna dry. I mean, just look at that sky. Yeah, that's not overexposed, that's just white out. Let's do it.
mine, oh mine, how things have changed here. Now we need to wear the mask at the albergue at all times. In France, towards the end, you know, nobody was wearing it, nobody was asking for the health path, but uh, it's okay, I can deal with it. And I got here, settled in, actually just looking for the luggage was a mission. Of course, I went to La Pension, it wasn't there. I went to the albergue, it wasn't there either. And then I finally went to the hotel where they had told me on the email and it was just there waiting for me. So I headed back to uh, the albergue, which is right behind the church. And I checked in, I pre-booked it. So that means that I had a lower bunk bed on the first floor, not at the end of the hall, but at the, on the first set of uh, bunk beds. Also, since I pre-booked, I'm having dinner here at the hotel and breakfast as well, instead of uh, La Pension, which is on the other side. I guess they fill this up first, and then the spillover goes to the other one. Last time around, I had dinner in the other place. Just been walking around with my uh, puffy uh, down jacket, which I haven't used in a long time because in France, it started getting warmer and warmer towards the end. And then now, I guess going over that huge mountain and being at a higher elevation, the temperature is just a little bit colder in the 50s, which is uh, nice. I love it. Tomorrow is supposed to be a uh, easy day, if I remember correctly. I think today was like the hottest day on the entire trip when it comes to the elevation. So let's just settle back, enjoy the rest of the trip, and uh, relive this Camino, which is uh, so dear uh, to me. I think uh, at the church we have uh, the Pilgrim Mass at 6, and at 7 is dinner at the hotel. Did I mention that I already had my first café con leche here in Spain? It was delicious, I have to say. Thank you guys so much for uh, following me on this crazy adventure that was uh, the Via Podiensis. And I want to thank, of course, the trail angel of the day. And today is going to be a very special one. Susan helped me a lot in the planning process of uh, making the trip possible. And she's right now walking the Camino Portuguese. So I wanna thank you, Susan, for your support. Thank you for your trail magic. And of course, if you wanna become a trail angel and drop some donations on me, I have a PayPal account, which I'll leave the link down below. All the money that you guys donate, I use it for pay for my expeditions. And right now, I have to thank everyone that donated during the Appalachian Trail. And when I was here in Spain in July, I'm using all those funds to pay for the Via Podiensis and also here on the Camino Frances all the way to uh, Logroño. It's almost 7 p.m. and I have to go to the hotel so that I can have my pilgrim uh, meal. And what do you think I'm going to have? It's probably going to be like the tuna salad and maybe chicken with fries, of course, oh, red wine. And uh, is it torta de Santiago? Is it flan or is it ice cream? I don't know. It's going to be great. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. sharp. Actually, I think here, if I remember correctly, at 6 a.m. in the morning, that guy's going to show up with a guitar playing. And I have to wake up earlier so I can film them. See you then.